forgive me for the fan, it's really hot. Um, I just want to kind of go back to fifth mark, fifth, the fifth meditation of the Cartesian, me of the Cartesian meditations. Um, essentially, what I want to talk about is the sphere of onus, or the original sphere, the primordial sphere. Um, the sphere of onus is characterized by Husserl in the Cartesian Meditations, or primarily the Fifth Meditation, as um, the sphere in which things are most primordially given to you. Um, it constitutes everything that is immediately in your experience, essentially, is what it is. Um, I want to talk about this with, with relation to discussion of how Husserl talks about how we experience other, other minds. I'm going, to I'm going to relate that to Werner Marx here a bit. Um, essentially, what Husserl wants to do, is doing, he's going he's to account for um, experiences of the other, primarily through um, when he talks about um, apperception for one, but he primarily talks about a monad, not in the Leibniz sense, but more a monad as in not that, not like a solipsistic circle that we have within ourselves, but more like that which in this that 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 which is within the sphere of onus, in which the in which the self is mirrored in uh, other beings. The sphere of onus is the totality, I guess, not the, the totality of your, of your experience, but it contains the most immediate givenness of phenomenon. Um, it contains everything that, you know, which is um, most primordial and primordial. Um, and I ha I've critiqued this before. I have a, like a 25 minute, minute video where I do go into this pretty pretty deeply. I'm not sure how well how good of a job I did, so I'm doing this uh, to do better. Um, essentially, the way that the way that Husserl characterizes our experience of others, of other people like ourselves, is by associative pairing. Um, the monad within me is how I how I am mirrored, I see parts of, I guess, it's, where the, I don't want to say subject, it's how we are mirrored. Um, the monad is the element of within the sphere of onus in which, um, sorry, I'm going to give a quote here. Um, Sphere bonus or primordiality, the monad is the is the dimension of that which is given itself primordially originally to the eye. It is the dimension in which others are mirrored. Other people are mirrored, okay, um, within the monad of ourselves. We we mirror, we see similar things in each, in, in each other because of this monad, and um, through that we get associative pairing. And, um, something of which, where he talks about intersu intersubjectivity in the Cartesian meditation as well, and, um, that would be on a larger scale, um, uh, you know, a larger scale of associative pairing, you know, on a larger kind of scale, um, and that, this is where you get things like, disgusting, like, evidence, but more, but, but, but more, more primarily I would think empathy, um, the empathy of uh, Husserl is, um, I don't want to say understanding because that has a lot of issues with it, it was between in the Gadamer Derrida encounter, Hermetic says yes, yes, Verstehen and fair, 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 fair stentness, understanding and comprehension, and Derrida says no, this is just metaphysics of presence, 
No, there is no such thing as understanding between mutual understanding or any other kind. So I don't want to use that word, even though it's a totally kind of un unrelated. Um, empathy is essentially to, to to not put it in necessarily in terms. Empathy is where you are putting yourself in someone else's shoes. But looking at that phenomenologically, it, it essentially means associative pairing. It, it's a, a, Empathy is what's going on between two people in a case of associative pairing. Um, as Let's say you and I are, are engaged in a, associative pairing, and that would mean that empathy is going from me to you, and empathy is going from you to me. So you understand everything I'm in, and I understand everything you're in. Um, and then if you want to go even further and read that the crisis of the, of the European sciences, primarily, uh, you get something called the Lebensfeld, or the life world. The life world, described by Herbert Spiegelberg, is um, the, the widening of our, of our sense of the... I, I'm, I'm, I might be, be mixing up the terms, but it's a deepening of, of our sense of self, at, while at the same time widening our sense of world. And that is where we discover ourselves, our true meaning, according to Husserl in the Indian Lebensfeld. Um, you know, and in that, you know, is discussed dwelling. Heidegger goes into goes into dwelling, and as does Werner Marx. But anyway, um, going on with Husserl's experience of the other, um, essentially, what happens there? in the experience of the other, is that Husserl says that, you know, I don't know if you understand phenomenology, but it's, it's called, one of the tenets is, one of the tenets is called intentionality. Uh, consciousness is consciousness of something, and then Sartre radicalizes that and says consciousness is nothing but consciousness of something, and I like that a lot. Um, I do like that uh, radicalizing, but I'm, I keep going off track, I apologize. Um, Consciousness is consciousness of something. And then in intentionality, let's say I'm looking at a water bottle, because I have a water bottle on this table here. I'm looking at that. This is an act of experience. This is a, an intentional act. And the object, is, or the um, intentional object, is what you would call um, noesis or noesis. If you're talking about matters of, no, of, of, of noesis or noesis, you, you, you would call it noetic. Um, and then if there's an intentional correlate to that having to do with um, meaning and such um, the correlate as to everything you know everything um, that is everything that, that you know like I guess um, the way that I would use the, use the bottle or and such um, you don't get I haven't seen as good of examples of that as you do in in uh, Heidegger's discussion of uh, ready to hand for Handen and Su Su Handen re re and ready to hand and present hand present hand is for Handen and um, ready to hand is Su Handen um, but he gives a good, a good example of Su Handen like the hammering in uh, being in time I keep getting on, off track I'm sorry <clears throat> The hammering, it's ready to hand because of its function of hammering. Um, you perceive it in the world. You perceive a hammer as with respect to its function. However, if, you, if you're using a pencil and you break the pencil, it's no longer of use to you, so you're just sitting there staring at it. That's forehanded, present hand. Uh, it's there. There's, it's not no longer understood in terms of, of, its, of, its, of its use to you. I get so off track, I'm sorry. Um, anyways, what Husserl is doing when he's talking about the, the experience of other minds in the mirroring of the monad, or the, the mirroring of, of, of the eye in the, in the monads, and the associative pairing, and intersubjectivity and all that stuff, um, what he's trying to do, he's saying that in our experience of others, through the sphere, the sphere of onus, through the ausgang, the departure from the sphere of uh, onus, 
what he's saying is that we're going to remove the intentional correlate, the uh, noma or the nomada of the intentional correlates of what we're experiencing of the other. The reason this is being done is to create a strata of experience. And when I say strata of experience, I mean levels of experience that are characterized from each other. Uh, for instance, we have the bare salps create a strata of experience. And when I say strata of experience, I mean levels of experience that are characterized from each other. Uh, for instance, we have the bare salps solipsistically reduced oregonosphera, and that's that's you know the the salps the solipsistically reduced, where you get the bare nature of, of everything around you and very very little. Now that's common that it has little ambiguity in it, and that that's where you know. Mr. has also been charged with solipsism, which, you know, he does then address this little issue. But he, what he means by sol solipsistically reduced fear is that you're only getting the bare nature. And then another thing about that, you know, is getting more of that. But then, uh, uh, higher than that is experience of other minds. And how you characterize, how he, how he wants to characterize this experience of, of, of other minds from other experiences is to take out the intentional correlate of Noma. That is how pretty much he's, he's, he, he's accounting for how we pick out our intentional experience of other minds out from our intentional out out of and distinguify or distinguish that from our experiences of other um, non-conscious things. Um, that's you know that's for him. That's the way that we um, you know with the monad and the and the associative pairing and the interest subjectivity and all that stuff and also the taking out of the initial correlate of, of noema. That's how we're going to account for distinguishing the intentional act of experiencing a water bottle from the intentional act of experiencing a person or, or, or another mind. And I critiqued that in my previous video I did maybe maybe a month ago, maybe a few weeks ago, I'm not sure. I watched it recently because I was thinking about this today. You know, I was... I, the, only, the, only, the, only, the only class I had today was East Asian philosophy, and yet I was thinking about phenomenology. Um, so... I don't know if any of you have read Werner Marx's Towards a Phenomenological Ethics, The Ethos in, in the Life World. But what he does in that is that he just brings to the, to the table two things that are integral and characteristic of our being. Um, and he, he does use Husserl in terms like, like life world. Then he also uses Heideggerian terms like attunement. Um, and he is somewhat, actually a lot of it, of a virtue theory. Of, uh, he, he puts his morality in virtue. Um, a virtuous transformation. He uses the word transformation. Um, first of all, he, he talks about this, this, characteristic, this characteristic of our being in mortality, which means that we are vulnerable to the world. Um, we are not Invulnerable. We're not invulnerable, you know. Something can happen to us easily. Second, we have so, so we have sociality. Um, a characteristic of, of our being is in relations to others. That's how our being is. Um, that in so in sociality, and he talks about this little transformation between being indifferent about others and being and being. It's well, it's this little tra transformation of attunement. Uh, it goes from being indifferent towards other, towards our, or towards our so, our so, sociality and immortality, but 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 primarily being indifferent in our so, in our so, sociality, and then that will go to, from that to forlornness and isolation. Um, you know, and that's a negative attunement. Um, but that's you know that's what will that's what. Indifference will, will lead to forlornness and isolation. That's his his terms. And then following that, if we change our attunement, attunement towards others, um, 
then our, um, I guess, it will change to be towards community and towards empathy and all of that and all that. So instead of taking out no no uh, uh, instead of taking out nomadic correlates and just because we can have this little thing this little strata of experience what that's we there's different characteristics about being of being between everyone which we can look at their being in an a uh, in an intentional act and distinguish them from say a water bottle or a pen because we see in that primarily mortality as as well as so sociality but i think mortality is what will get you there first that that's what that is what will move you first towards changing the attunement so um let, let me know what your what your thoughts are on this this is a little bit uh better of a cr critique i think than than my other video so yeah if you have any questions feel free to um youtube message me or or, or comment um i get a uh email every time one of you does that so uh feel free um i'll probably be i'll probably be making a few, a few more videos over this coming weekend labor day weekend